Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Marvelous Movie Mondays. If you watched our first episode on Loki episode five, if you're just joining us because you saw Black Widow review, welcome. I am one of the co-hosts of the show, Dylan. And I'm your other co-host, Kelsey. That's right. We're here every single Monday talking about Marvel, and we're actually in the same studio for this review, which is really, really exciting because we just got back from watching Black Widow. All right, so we, we walked in the rain. It was, it was very rainy, but we made it. We, we made did. It to the... IMAX. Are you excited, Kels? Yeah, I'm so excited, Dill. I'm very excited. Uh, Kelsey, what did you say to me when we got in here? I said, Dill, look at us and all these nerds. And then we realized that we are also nerds. I'm wearing my Marvel shirt. I'm wearing my Marvel shirt that you just saw in the last podcast. So we literally left that podcast, came here, and we're podcasting for you guys again. So. This is this is a part of who I am, I guess. Yep. At this point. All right. So we'll, we'll get a little bit more footage inside uh, at, at the biggest screen in the United States. So, see you then. I feel like I'm in a spaceship. They gave us these Black Widow combo comic books. Pretty cool. Nice little treat for the uh, IMAX experience. All right, here we go. The trailers are starting. Catch you on the flippity flip. It was pretty... Uh, pretty cool just to see a big movie on the big screen again. Uh, yeah. I've seen some movies, but at this scale, uh, especially a superhero movie, you know, it, it felt like summer blockbusters were finally like back. Yeah. You know, I said that about In the Heights, but people didn't go see it. Uh, people mm -hmm. didn't pay the box office money, but they definitely paid for this one. Mm -hmm. um, if you're new to the show, Kelsey always likes to start us off with uh, a little synopsis of what we saw. Uh, just letting you know now, this is a, is a bleh, this is a non-spoiler review. Uh, I'm not going to edit it together. I'm not going to chop it up. It's just going to be us talking about the movie, uh, but we're going to keep spoilers out of it. At the very end, there are a few things like the Taskmaster, like the post credit scene that we're going to want to get into some spoilers for. So we will save that to the very end, and I will put this little spoiler ban right on the bottom so you know exactly when that's coming. So if you're here for no spoilers, as long as there's no spoiler thing on the bottom, we will not spoil it for you. But the only things we'll tell you are things that we that you know we already knew going in from the trailer and then just very general reactions to things. Sound good? Great. Cool. So welcome, Kelsey. Take us away with your little synopsis. Okay. We see the events that take place in Natasha's life in between Civil War and Infinity War while she is on the run from the U.S. government for breaking the Sokovia Accords. That's right. Uh, so it picks up right where it left off, uh, literally, right after Civil War. So mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people have been arrested, but they're still on the hunt for, of course, Steve Rogers and Natasha Romanoff. We know that from the trailer. Um, so we figured, you know... For our TV show reviews, we kind of go scene by scene, breaking it down. But we didn't want to sit in the movie theater and write down every single scene and yeah. take every single detail. <laughs> I brought my notebook to the movie theater, but I didn't take it out once because I was just like, I just want right. to take this all in. Um, so I thought maybe we'll just go, we'll talk about the good stuff first, the stuff we really liked. Yeah. And then we can talk about the stuff maybe we didn't like. Uh, and then we can dive into any last things before spoilers. Does that sound good? Yeah. All right, so Kelsey, just tell us your overall opinion on the movie and like anything you thought was good and we can branch off of that. Yeah, totally. I really liked this movie okay, cool. a lot. I really, really enjoyed it. It just felt like a classic superhero movie, but then also like a classic spy movie as well. Mm -hmm. It just felt like such an empowering film for like women in Marvel. Yeah. And it's just like the movie that we've kind of all been waiting for. You know, yeah. this character's been with us from the beginning. So it, it just felt like you were just saying oh, finally the whole yeah. time you know i mean that's one of the beauties just about the film in general yeah it's like she's getting her own movie it feels long overdue and and, and some of the stuff i'll talk about when we talk about the bad is just the how just how everything happened in terms of the world and the pandemic and like that this mm -hmm. is the first movie to welcome us back like there really had to be the biggest expectations for this because everyone was like itching to get back and we've had such great tv series as well but i do think this was a great movie to just showcase scarlett johansson as mm -hmm. this character basically because it is a send-off because we've already seen her have you seen if you're watching this you've probably seen avengers endgame she died in avengers endgame so now mm -hmm. this is almost like her send-off even though we've already kind of had her send-off already like yeah. this is her definitive send-off um yeah, so I just thought it was nice that this movie in general was about a female hero. You know, we've only gotten really one other one, Captain Marvel. So mm -hmm. uh, that, that was a really nice thing. Um, what else did you like? The fight sequences okay. I thought were so cool. Yeah. So badass. Mm -hmm. I mean, Natasha is such an interesting, like, precise, like, practice, like, way of fighting and like taking people out like we've seen this since you know iron man 2 when she first made her appearance in the mcu so the fact that we just got like more of that and just it's mm -hmm. it's just exciting because she very rarely like 
I mean, she she took a few punches in this film. Oh, she really yeah. did. She yeah. had her shit rocked. And, and that's, the, and that's the aspects of the action I like the most. Because you know me, I mean, I've said in the show, like the big CGI stuff, it's yeah. not as impressive to me anymore. Yeah. So like there's a very end, there's an end sequence that's all that. And it's like things flying around CGI where I'm like, okay, yeah, it's a little much. But sure. the things I like the most were when like, you know, people's wrists would snap in half or someone would fall to their death and their bones would be like yeah. in this shape or someone's nose, they have to put it back into place. And it's things like that where I'm like, okay, cool. Like take this grittier step yeah. in the MCU. Because now I think phase four, we can start to get a little bit more experimental just and, and try new things, you know? Sure. Uh, people have been trying. Guardians of the Galaxy was like the first real stab at comedy. And, you know, Doctor Strange opened so much more visually for the franchise. So I think mm -hmm. I'm glad that it went in a darker route for the action and the violence. Um, yeah, just some of the action set pieces are really cool. I mean, the whole beginning action sequence took place with a plane trying to leave a runway and mm -hmm. everyone trying to literally, people are hanging off the plane outside the plane. I mean, I thought it was just a really, yeah. there were some very cool action sequences. And I think now we can segue into the actual family itself. Cause I think a lot of the action sequences are heightened and made better by the, you know, the chemistry of these four actors. Because it really is yeah. four actors at the helm. Yeah. You have Scarlett Johansson as Black Widow. You have Florence Pugh as her sister, David Harbour as her father, and, of course, Rachel Weisz as the mom. And I think their chemistry works so well. So those action sequences are even made better by, you know, each of them getting to show their own unique skills mm -hmm. and talents. It almost made me think of, like, The Incredibles, just how everyone mm -hmm. had their own yeah. little purpose and, you know, motivation within the action sequences, but they all came together very nicely as well. Um, and that cast, I mean, the cast yeah. was perfect. I mean... Talk about I mean, that. I would also like to say really quick yeah. that the pacing, I thought mm -hmm. that this movie was like so it was very like, well paced. Brilliantly paced. Mm -hmm. Like we like you we like you said with the whole airplane sequence, it's like we started this film and we like took off running, mm -hmm. like full speed ahead. Like yeah. you were on it for the long haul. Yeah, and I think they know now how to exactly pace their films because mm -hmm. some of their films like Infinity War has been darker and denser. And even Loki, we've been talking about how there are a lot of human moments where just the two talking, but the conversations are just intriguing enough that we're, you know, invested the whole way through. It doesn't feel like every conversation between characters is like a lull. I mm -hmm. actually thought the moments between the family just chatting and just cat throwing some jokes, some yeah. not throwing jokes, some the total opposite, like not there for the humor, those moments to me were even more enticing to me than the action. Because I was like, just I just wanted to see this family interact with one another. Yeah. And I think they all play a different part so well because Scarlett Johansson is very much like the strict, like, I'm not joking around. Mm -hmm. Florence Pugh's kind of like the sassy, sarcastic one. Yeah. And then you have David Harbour, who is literally the comedian, the comedic yeah. relief of this yeah. film. Just, uh, so what, what do you think of the cast? Itself? He did such a great job in this really role. Yeah. I mean, there were some times where I felt like he was kind of slipping out of his accent sometimes. Yes. Like there are definitely some moments. Yeah, and the, the, Rus tough. the Russian tough. accent made it a little hard to understand. That's okay. one of my qualms with this yeah, film. Which we'll get to. But. It's just like sometimes I just couldn't understand what they were saying. Mm -hmm. And it's not like you're in the comfort of your home where you can watch it with the subtitles on. Right. So you can understand what's happening. Because uh -huh. there were some like there were like key details that I was missing that would come into play later. Like there was that one point where I leaned over you and I was like, oh, she said that she saw where he put the keys. And I was and like, they yeah, they the just car. said that. Got it. And yeah. But it took me a minute to I do think Florence Pugh's thing. accent, it was pretty spot on. Though. Yeah. I think she yeah. really nailed it because, again, she doesn't talk a lot in this movie. A lot of them are like little clips and quips and reactions to other people. David Harbour is really the one who like likes to kind of bathe and bask in the in the dialogue and i mean that's yeah. just the way it was written just yeah. a lot of like that comedic like oh i'm gonna tell like this short little joke but it really ends up being a longer extended joke uh but i really like that i think mcu movies now have an expectation for the action the characters and the humor and i think the humor in this at times maybe there was a serious moment where the humor kind of undercut it a little bit but i think mm. for the most part the humor was pretty consistent yeah especially with david harper you know like that moment where he's like with sees his wife again for the first time for a while and oh has my this little, god like, like i like he's like very turned on and getting all sexy but it's like so not sexy just because of what he's wearing and what yeah. he's doing and his physicality no yeah I, it, there's a moment that reminds me of like mr incredible trying to fit into a suit and david harper just made that moment so funny yeah um yeah for sure yeah but i think the real highlight is florence pew she just like stole the show for me like everything she did i was just like i was with it 100 like some of the humor I haven't loved in some of these more serious moments uh, of the movie, but she really just knows exactly what movie she's in, exactly every scene. She mm -hmm. just knows exactly how to react uh, to that. So. Yeah, she nailed, like, the witty remarks, like, every time. 100%. You know, it wasn't too much. It wasn't too little. It was, right. it was perfect the way yeah. it was, which is, like, goes into, like, the next thing I have to say, which is, like, this movie, like, did not hold back. Like, 
you definitely have to be a more mature audience member, I feel like, to handle some of the conversations that happen. The conversations these, themselves, yeah. The, the, uh, that happens in these films. Like, they, you know, they touched a lot. Like, I feel like things that we know that were hinted on in Natasha's past, like, very briefly were, like, hinted at and like, Age of Ultron are, like, the front, like, of the conversation yeah. that gets had in, in uh, one of one of the scenes in the films. And I'm, I was just kind of like, yeah, like... Why, why would we have to like brush over that concept? Like, let's just talk mm -hmm. about it. You know, let's like yeah. put it in front of the audience member's face. And like, you know, if it makes someone uncomfortable, well, it should yeah, because course. some women have to like do that and like mm -hmm. go through that. Yeah. And I think it's a shame that we've only really gotten two huge tentpole women films, Captain Marvel and Wonder Woman, mm -hmm. two completely different franchises. But now we really get to like, because they already they were taking a gamble with Captain Marvel because some people like it was a new character so some people weren't fans of it because they just didn't like the character but they already knew people like Black Widow so now it was easier to kind of have some of these conversations because they already knew they had the audience's trust so I think they almost had an easier job of doing it but they did it very well like I think these are important messages uh, and that, that segues me into one of the things I loved a lot too was mm -hmm. the childhood scenes because we get a mm -hmm. lot of them as kids and I loved seeing first off spot on casting for the little one yeah. little Florence Pugh nailed it uh, the casting and even she little, little the Natasha little girl was in a, the haunting of hill house really have you ever watched that? i have not watched that she was little she that. was if you've seen the haunting of hill house she was little nell oh okay she's one of the twins yeah she i mean she was great uh yeah the whole family dynamic again it's just so strong natasha don't slouch i'm not slouching you're going to get the big hunch mm, listen to your mother oh my god this up, up, all right enough and like that's the crux of the movie to me it's like mm -hmm. the action sequence is as good or bad as a were or styled or we'll get into it but like i really thought the family moments where they're just talking i mean that first interaction with florence Pugh and scarlett johansson when they're older mm -hmm. and just talking and then have the guns pointed to one another that that was a scene from the trailer i mean it just yeah they just they work so well it's just a perfect cast for it and i loved how even the beginning with little natasha like you already saw that she was like more advanced you know mm -hmm. like she was able to like kick a guy and like take his gun from him right and we just like saw those like hints of like who she was going to like mm -hmm. turn into you know for better or for yeah. worse what i didn't like about the beginning was and i i don't think like i'm giving anything away no. was that i just wish it went more into like i wish it took us through like a bunch of natasha i was gonna say like, we, was gonna... this is like natasha when she's 10 this is natasha when she's 15 this is you know like i mean it kind of goes from stages. one extreme to the other it's like yeah. little kid scarlett johansson and then the rest of her life like this whole middle chunk yeah is told in a matter of two minutes to smells like teen spirit an <laughs> interesting cover uh yeah that's the like the opening credit sequence and i i just I agree. I think I think the most fascinating stuff that I wanted to know the most about was the stuff that was kind of breeze past. Right. Whereas like her whole yeah. like life in the red room. And I guess we can kind of segue now into I guess we shouldn't say the bad, but the things that were not as strong to me. And I think that's just the fact that this movie is coming after she's already been dead. And we haven't had a movie in theaters now for like two years almost. So it's been a while since like if this came out right after an endgame, I think it would have had a little bit more resonance. But I think mm -hmm. because it came out so long after, her stakes themselves don't seem as high. I feel well, that's not the movie's fault. Well, yeah, it's, but again, it's it's the planning. <laughs> the world of the, shut down. I, no, but I'm even saying just the putting it after Endgame. Just even if you're watching mm -hmm. it a marathon, I think the stakes are just a little lower because you're never wondering, oh, is Natasha gonna die? Because she's not yeah. the whole time. Uh, spoiler alert, you know, because she survives it because it's the middle of the whole thing, you know. Yeah, it's before uh, the Endgame. Timeline. So yeah, obviously she's making it out right. to the end. So so it was like that that part just like the whole time I was never like at the edge of my seat worried like an Endgame mm -hmm. or Infinity War where I was like, is someone gonna die? Like when Loki dies in the beginning of Infinity War, I had not seen that coming. Yeah. I was shocked. I was like they're killing him off in the beginning. But here it's like, yeah, you're never gonna have that worry. Even as sure. tough as a scenario as she's in, you're worried about the other people around her. I was worried about one of the family members. Exactly. I was but like, oh God, who are they? That's gonna... a testament to how well they're roles yeah you, know, you like their characters but again yeah. like i feel like natasha stakes herself it was always clear that she would make it out squeaky clean so it's like just that itself took away whereas i think the most stakes she faced was in those younger years and that was kind mm -hmm. of the stuff they montaged through again yeah. that's not the fault like they wanted to tell this chapter of natasha's life but i think honestly i'd love to see maybe a series of young natasha and young uh elena yelena oh, yelena sorry yelena. yeah yelena like young yelena and Natasha like growing mm -hmm. up and like having these traumatic experiences because they come from really traumatic backgrounds um so I, I would have liked a little bit more exploration of that no, but yeah, again for sure they don't want to make it too much of an origin story so like I get it but at the same time that's kind of like what I want to see is no yeah. exactly and it sucks that they didn't make this movie you know before all this stuff happened with like Endgame like you know she was one of the 
main six. She was there mm -hmm. since, you know, 2010 when yeah. Iron Man 2 came mm -hmm. out. Um, yeah, you know, she should have gotten her own movie somewhere along this, you know, uh, across the 23 films. Mm -hmm. And I just am so upset. Like, I was watching this movie and I was like, so upset. I was like, why didn't they think that people would show up for this movie, for this character? She is one of the coolest, like, most badass, like, so, like, complex, so layered. Mm -hmm. She has so much heart. Like, I, I was like, why did they people think that? people showed up for Captain Marvel. They showed up for Wonder Woman. It made mm -hmm. money. So it's not that they're not willing to show up for female-led stories. So I really don't know why. I think that, you know, I'm thinking, like, way early on Marvel. Like, like phase before, one. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, phase, like, one, phase two, where, mm -hmm. you know, they were just, where they were releasing every, seemingly everyone was getting an origin story except for right. her. And I right. feel like back then they were like, oh, well, people yeah. wouldn't go or whatever. Yeah, it's interesting also because, like, this movie, if it had come out, it would have come out somewhere in that stretch of like Thor Ragnarok, Black Panther, Guardians 2, because it was right after Civil War, right before Infinity War. So it would have been somewhere sandwiched in there. And mm -hmm. I think it would have worked there because honestly, the problem some Marvel movies have is they set up, it's too much it was setting up the future rather than just being its own thing. Mm -hmm. And I get it, it's a franchise, you need to do that. But here, they didn't need to set up the future because we know what the future is. And right. I feel like a lot of the scenes, especially toward the end of the movie, were all about like, we're going to establish the future of Black Widow, but like, we know what happens next. We don't need to see, I'm not going to spoil what we see in this last scene because the last scene of the movie feels like its own post credit scene just because it's teasing something that would come in Infinity mm -hmm. War. But we've already seen Infinity War, so it's not... And it's not like a Millennium Falcon type thing in Star Wars where it's like this huge nostalgia kick when you see the image that you see. It's just kind of like, okay, like we see this in Infinity War, but like what resonance does it mean now all these years later? And I think right. that's just the, the idea of releasing it after all these movies have come out and just making this movie too late. I think this is a movie that should have been made much earlier and I think it would have fit in better when it takes place in the timeline rather than now. Because like yeah. Captain Marvel, it doesn't take place at the time of the timeline. It's the first one after Captain mm -hmm. America First Avenger, but because they do it right before Infinity War, before Endgame, and like you kind of got that post credits teaser with Infinity War, it makes sense to kind of go back there. Mm -hmm. But here, it's like the character's arc is done. Like, I would just wish they had released yeah. this film earlier, but that's you know you can't change that at all. I mean, that's why I was sitting here the whole time, like waiting for you know the events of Endgame to be kind of like reversed somehow. You know, right? And the thing is, they don't. It, it's literally. I mean, I don't think this is a huge spoiler. It's just it's to tell you that this is a movie that could. It can be watched in the timeline order, just normally. I mean, maybe you say for maybe a post credit scene, but it's 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 not diving into any of the stuff that happened after Endgame with Natasha. Yeah. So um, that might be a letdown for some people. For me, it really wasn't. But toward the end of the movie, I was like, don't set up stuff that's coming. We know it came. Just let it be this story. Right. Um, uh, now we can segue to some of the other stuff also that I didn't love, and that was um, like I said, this is a summer blockbuster. It's entertaining. It, it pacing was great entertainment wise i think the action sequences are cool the only thing that really took me out of it was the cinematography itself there's a lot of so like real extreme close-ups mm -hmm. and a lot of weird cuts back and forth that i just wish some of the action sequences they just kind of like let the camera sit for a little bit and let them play out because there's okay. a lot of cutting and i kind of got a little bit dizzy almost sure. watching it and maybe it was because it was on a huge imax screen but it just seemed <laughs> like it was just a lot of just like back and forth cut 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 and i feel even more so than a lot of the other marvel movies like my favorite shot from endgame is that shot where they're all just running across the battlefield and mm -hmm. I think a lesser cinematographer would have, you know, zoom in on Ant-Man running across and then Iron Man mm. and then this and that. But that battle, they just linger it. And I think it's much more effective that way. I feel like a yeah. lot of the action sequences were cool, but it was a lot of the camera going, oh, from this angle and this angle and this angle and this angle and this angle, where it kind of became a little distracting, especially toward the end. In the beginning, it didn't matter as much, but then toward the end, especially when you're adding all this CGI on top, it just became a little bit of a visual mess to me, just in terms of just things popping up in the screen and just being a little bit of a distraction. But again, the action sequences themselves, I think, are constructed well enough. They really dive into the fighting styles. I love how they make fun of the superhero landing, finally, because <laughs> every person does it. That's another right. reason I love Florence Pugh in this movie. Yeah. They, they point those things out, like the stupid superhero landing where they put their head down and look up, and it's like, everyone does it. Yeah. And it's like such a Marvel trademark, and for them to be able to be meta enough to comment no, on yeah, it. No, yeah, it's nice. definitely like a self-aware moment, like a yeah. Deadpool moment. Um, yeah, what were other? Are there any other things that like bothered you about it, or that you just didn't love about it? Because because we both, you can tell, we both liked this movie. I think you liked it a little bit more than me, but like I, I we still both really liked it. I mean, it was just the crowd itself and the entertainment itself. I mean, stuff. I I liked it a lot. Like Natasha's yeah. turned into like one of my favorite characters in the MCU. Mm -hmm. Like because just of like how how much like layer she has and how mm -hmm. multifaceted she is. I just think that you know she is like that. 
Yelena says in the movie, like she is a a a, a woman, a, a female hero that little girls like look up to and mm -hmm. and call a hero. Yeah, you know, so it's like you know, gotta love her. She's yeah. a special place in my heart. Now here's now. my question: Do you think because David Harbour and Florence Pugh and even Rachel Weisz, because they were so such great casting and the characters were so interesting. Do you think it ever took away from her? Because I feel like, especially in the first half of the movie, it just felt like Natasha was kind of an observer with all these other people. And like, it was more about the others than her. At the end, I think she gets a really great moment, mm -hmm. like a really great scene to really show off her acting and her central character. But I think a lot of the first half of the film for me was all about like the other people around her. Mm -hmm. It was her kind of, they were almost going from place to place to introduce these different people. And it was just kind of, uh, Natasha was just there to be the eye of the story. Did that take it away for, for you or no? I mean, no, like that being said, what I just said, like even getting, I didn't mind exploring like new characters in her life because right. I still found the dynamic between her and these people like mm -hmm. interesting to watch, yeah. you know, because I, I love Natasha. I just told you how much right. I love her. Exactly, yeah. yeah. But like I didn't mind like delving deeper into like Yelena's story and like oh, figuring yeah. out like how she came into mm -hmm. all of this and like right. I love those you know. too. I, it's just I at points I was like, wait, I want to see just more of Natasha because it is her story, okay, it is her sure. solo movie. But you make a good point. Like we already but know if, a lot about her. But at this point, we do know a lot about her, and we know it's not really like an origin story. Like it's it's, it's almost an origin story for. Yelena, Yelena yeah, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, setting and her I, up for the future. And I, honestly, I was watching it, and I was like, I almost wish that I looked more into this Red Guardian character that mm -hmm. David Hopper plays. David, David Harbour. Oh my Hopper God, I just combined with... his name with his character. <laughs> David Hopper. David, David Harbour. Harbour, yeah. I almost wish that I looked more into him. I don't know if that would have spoiled any mm -hmm. major plot points for me in the movie, oh. but, you know, he just, like, we don't really get to see eh, really anything about what he does up until like we only get to hear things about his character right. and it seems like an interesting character more yeah story. And that's the thing i think these new characters because they're so fascinating we don't know a ton about them they did take away from natasha's story in the beginning for me i think in the second half natasha gets a really cool standoff with the villain that's yeah. really awesome yeah. and I, I thought from then on i was like yeah no Nat natasha's commanding this this story but uh yeah earlier on i wish maybe they had explored some of those things about david harbour's character florence Pugh's, but maybe again maybe we'll get that maybe in the future because they are very good characters they're very likable characters their characters you know we could explore even back in time we don't now that we've seen that we can go back in time yeah and not necessarily have to go in consequential order yeah maybe then we can go back and explore those things who knows did you see the twist coming the twist yeah it'll be hard to talk about without spoilers i'll talk about it really quickly now and then we'll talk about it more, more with the spoilers i saw the twist coming until the twist of the twist came i saw the first twist come I don't know if we're talking about the same twist. We'll talk about it when we get to spoilers. How about that? Okay, okay. fine. I just have to ask one thing. Okay. We haven't talked about it. Okay. The villain. Okay. What do you think of the villain? Well, I didn't want to talk about this until we got to I'm not talking about Taskmaster. Though. I'm talking about the villain that we see in the trailer that is on the poster. It's uh, Ray Winstone's character. He's kind of like in charge of the whole thing. He's like the man in chair. The big guy glasses. You're talking about like Dra Dra Dravik? Yes. Yes. Dravik? Yes. Whatever his name is. I don't know, but yes. Um, I liked it because it was a okay. it was a team of women taking down this powerful white man, and I was like, yeah. I know. I just you can't I, see my snapping. I guess I just wanted a more complex, something more unique about the villain himself. That not just that he was just just big dude who was in charge of. Well, things, I know? think that was like the point. It was like this big fat white guy who just like sits on his ass all day and has all this power for what reason? Oh, because you have a team of women doing all the heavy lifting for you. I think that like added more to like of a com so of almost a very making real... his character so simple. Yes, made the. Theme made effective. him That's even good. more infuriating yeah. because it's like you don't even do anything you sit here and you push buttons well, that was my big thing and is you're he was so, so one powerful note. for what yeah. no, no you make a good point because i know? left that being like oh the villain was just so one note it just but felt think, wasted you know because you know, it, it almost felt like ironmonger if he didn't make the suit you know just kind of this guy who yells at people oh you know? okay but what i saying yeah yeah but again you know that you make a great point that that was used I as think an that's just a perspective thing like yeah. you would oh, see totally. the villain that way and then i would be like oh yeah take down this bastard no i, I here's the thing i was very happy he, you know the, the villain got his comeuppance yeah and for I, sure because you know, he's still the villain right exactly but i do think you know we've gotten so many just rich textured villains mm -hmm. you know like i love marvel villains we talked all about marvel villains in a video we did like we're doing a whole series now, Loki, on a Marvel villain who was just so complex. I just maybe wished we had gotten a little bit more than just like this 
man who's just barking orders, this big guy who just sits in a chair, but you make a good point. So maybe, maybe I'm swaying, you're swaying my mind on Her that. Her taking him down was so satisfying mm-hmm. because I knew she was doing the same shit that she did in uh, Avengers to Loki, where I was mm-hmm. like, she's just playing mind games with him yeah. now. He doesn't even know what he created. Like, he created, like, someone who's just so brilliant. Oh. I think this movie does a good job, without spoiling too much, of just – like giving Natasha also a lot of like credit for her mental skills and her persuasion mm-hmm. and her, her brain than just the legs wrapped around the neck choke, hit, that which is movie. awesome. I'll never get enough of it though. Right. I'll never get enough. Right, exactly. Do it every scene. Yeah. I'll be like, yeah. And that's, that's what so I said. Cool. I, I think the action scene was as cool as they were every time. Just the camera was just going nuts that it was distracting me. My favorite moments were when the characters were just talking to one another mm. because even in the villain hero standoff, there was just so much subtext in their conversation, just the two of them just talking. Mm-hmm. And yes, there are punches thrown here and there, but it's not like this consistent battle. It's every now and then there's a punch thrown, and it's a brutal punch. It's a violent punch. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I just love that, just those character moments, even then, where it's like not even a relatability thing. Like it's not even a heart to heart. It's more of like just a standout, which is worse. It reminds me of the Dark Knight Joker Batman standoff, where they're just literally punching the shit out of each other and yelling at each other and talking rather than like pulling out all the gadgets and all mm. that. Yeah. What were you going to say? I was going to say, like, even in the moments where, like, Natasha was, like, getting her ass beat, I was, I, though, even those moments felt kind of refreshing. Mm-hmm. I guess because she's just so good at combat, like, hand to hand, and, like, she does have all her fancy gadgets and her wits and everything that she very rarely, like, loses. Mm-hmm. Like, the only time we ever see her, like, really lose is when, you know, she has, when, Wanda, like, you know, yes. messes with her mind in Age of Ultron, right. and then she, you know, ends up getting, like, you know, taken out of the jet and, mm-hmm. you know, kidnapped by Ultron and whatever. We very rarely, like, see her lose, you yeah. know? And to, like, watch her, like, get, you know, like, seriously beat up by, like, some of these people, I was like, oh, my God, like, yeah, she, she might have met her match mm-hmm. in this scenario. Yeah. And I think it's just the fact that, like, Disney now with Infinity War and Endgame realized they could get darker with their stuff, you know? Yeah. It's not all this, like, we're superheroes, but, like, we're superheroes, you know? <laughs> it's just a darker storytelling in general. We're edgy superheroes. The only last thing I had to say about things that, like, I didn't love about it was just that I feel like some of the other characters that they tease, we'll get into the Taskmaster, but, like, her friend who, like, she's who's kind of into her, he just kind of seemed like there as a plot device. And I know I yeah. said, you know, I, I know we, we had our own theories about who he would play, you know, what part oh, he would right. play, what part he would play yeah, in the movie. Yeah, but it's yeah. like that character kind of just seemed like a throwaway and, you know, other people along the way. I, I think it's all about the family. And I think the family is so strong, though, it's, I'm willing to forgive, like, the other weaker character developments. Um, and then again, with the humor, I think there were moments, like there's a really nice heart to heart between David Harbour and Florence Pugh, mm-hmm. really nice heart to heart. And then at the very yeah. end, there's like a joke, he cracks. I'm like, no, just like, leave it, like savor the moment. Cause it's like this beautiful moment and it's so tender. And then people just like, now it's an uproar applause. And I'm like, uh, and then laughter. I'm like, I just, I wanted to live in that moment. Yeah. Like, there are moments like that where yeah. I'm like, maybe a joke or two could have been sub- sub- subtracted, but in the moments where it is just people shooting the shit and, and making jokes like that was so strong. Like yeah. David Harbour's just hilarious. I just keep going on about it. But yeah, she, there's like one character in this film that I don't really understand, like yeah. why it was there. You know, we're talking about spoilers. <laughs> we're talking. I'm, I'm saying like the friend. Oh, the friend. Yeah, yeah. Who okay. like is her like plug? Yeah, yeah. Again, another side character that I just yeah I don't think yeah he was much. He didn't add much. Like, he didn't did add she, anything. At any point in the film, like did she even like call him by his name? I don't even know. I don't even I don't think, think so. so. Again, you know, it's... <laughs> like, it's I like, don't even know his name. You could have just used a different character to get all the things you needed from that character. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Just make it some literally someone else. Even, you know, pay a few extra bucks. Get, like, another Avenger. I know we, we don't want to stuff it with too many other Avengers. Sure. But just get, like, someone else. Who's, Honestly, or, I was waiting know. for a Clint cameo the whole film. Right, because, you know, well, we're waiting for a ton of cameos. We'll get into the spoiler talk of, like, what cameos we did see and what we didn't see. But, um... Yeah, I agree. I think I was expecting a lot more cameos, but I'm okay that we didn't get them all. No, I'm yeah. fine. Yeah. I, I didn't need it, but mm-hmm. like, I don't know, for like when it when she said like, oh, like I know someone who could like get us into the Yes. I was like, oh, well. They're going to call an Avenger. He, yeah. They're going to like be taken to a, she, because she said we're going to need a jet though, and and then they were walking the field. I thought they were totally just walking up to his house right. in that moment, no, and I was yeah. like, oh my God. <laughs> but then I remembered throughout that entire film, he's on house arrest, so he can't help right. anyway. So yeah. And that's another thing too, is just coming out so late, you have to kind of put yourself in a mindset of, wait, where is everyone during Civil War? Which I think is a negative for people maybe just embracing the franchise newer, like newer fans. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a lot, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of homework to keep up with exactly what was going on in the timeline 
We have no problem with it. You probably don't have a problem with it if you're watching, but some people may have a problem with it. They're mm. keeping up, like, wait, who's where? What? What is the Sokovia Accords? Like, who is that Thunderbolt Ross? Which, again, that was another character I was like, oh, okay, like, you, he's just there. Yeah. Um, I, again, he has a purpose, but it was Classic. like, you know, you, you got William Hurt, use him. And I feel like they didn't really use him too much. But, um, again, like, I think it's a solid film. Before we get to spoilers, we'll talk to the Taskmaster, we'll talk post-credits, we'll talk any cameos in just a second. But uh, I do want to say, I think this is... A movie that I think if it was released earlier might have been a better movie in context with everything going on. I think some of the the way they try to kind of connect it to certain movies that have already happened was like a little weird to me, whereas I, I just wish it was just its own thing at times. But I think the cast is so strong. The family is so strong. I mean, I think Scarlett Johansson does a great job. I think Florence Pugh and David Harbour are the standouts. Uh, I think the action's good, a little bit messy with the cinematography, but I think overall it's a very entertaining film. And I think it's a good way to welcome you back to the theater. It is not probably the best film to do so, even of the ones we'll see this year, but I think it was a good welcome back to Marvel in cinemas. Yeah, I feel like if you watch this film and then you immediately watch like Infinity War and then Endgame, I feel like it just makes everything that she does in those films like have so much more weight. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. because you like you know everything that she was just coming off mm-hmm. of, even though obviously like Scarlett Johansson like didn't have that in her mind right. as she was acting mm-hmm. in Infinity War and yeah. Endgame. It but, almost like, makes it feel a little bit fan fictiony because we've gotten the ending already. We're kind of going back. It's like Rogue sure. One with Star Wars. It's like it takes place. All in the right, middle of again a... with the Star Wars I'm stuff. I don't have it. headphones to take off today. Yeah, I, I'm sitting. I'm not getting the Star Wars talk, but it is one of those things where it's like whether you have it or not, the story still goes as is. It just adds another layer yeah. that doesn't necessarily need to be there, but it's it's welcome. It's a welcome layer. Yeah. So where does this rank, you think, in MCU in general? We'll rank the movies later in the month. We have it planned. But, like, what do you think? Just just right now, just off the top of your head, is it top tier? Is it middle tier? Is it bottom tier? I think this is top tier. This really? This is top tier for okay, me. Okay, cool. Up with I, Guardians. I, yeah. Okay, for cool. sure, up with Great. Guardians. Wow. Yeah, I, I, think it's like, I think it's, like, mid-tier to me. Just because I think, okay. you know, there are still things that I – just about the design aspect. Like I said, the cinematography just really took me out a lot, but I think sure. the story itself is very strong. The cast is strong. So it's still mid-tier. It's not like a bad Marvel film by any means. I still give it like a thumbs up for sure. I think this was Scarlett Johansson's best work in the MCU. Oh, 100%. Yeah, because she actually got to do a lot. You yeah. know, she actually got to get her full arc as well as much as I think other people outshadowed her at times. I think she did a good job. So now let's transition. Uh, so, so go see it. It's good. Uh, transitioning now to spoilers. So if you have not seen the film, do not watch this. Unless you want to watch this and be that person who ruins it for you after waiting years for a new Marvel film. Who knows? Um, let's talk The Taskmaster. Okay. I don't know how I feel about it, Kelsey. I'd like to know your take on it. I just think, like, not that I wanted it to be. I mean, I understand now. Honestly, we were kind of dumb. In case you're curious and you watched our last, like, Loki review. I the think last, was, last Loki. It was episode Loki four. episode four review. We try to predict who the taskmaster might be yeah, they we had a bunch game. of uh uh theories about that but everything we said was wrong yeah like let's go through some of our theories so i thought it might be this guy but this guy of course was just kind of like a throwaway character which is a shame because i was like why is he just on the poster just doing nothing it's because he really does nothing he just kind of gets gets natasha the things she needs um Colin Jost obviously wasn't going to happen. Uh, Stan Lee obviously wasn't going to happen. That was a joke. Uh, Rachel Weiss, I thought for a point it might have been her because mm-hmm. there was like a twist where it's like, oh, she's the bad guy. And then it was like, oh, wait, second twist, she's not. And that's what I was talking yeah. about when I said I could like kind of oh, see the okay. twist. Yes. When she was revealed as the bad guy, I was like, yeah, I, I saw that coming. But right. then when it was revealed that she really wasn't evil, was I was, that's when I was like, whoa. So the first twist... I predicted the second twist I did not. So the twist of the twist I did not see coming. And then Scarlett herself, I thought that could have been a very, like, probable thing, especially Mm -hmm. when they're, like, ready to take off the mask. I was like, maybe it's just going to be a clone of her. I was really hoping. But no, it it was his daughter. It was the evil guy's daughter that she thought she had blown up to get back at him, but she didn't. Uh, And that he brainwashed just like everyone else, but Mm -hmm. instead made a fighter who could literally replicate every move, which I think is a cool, I think the power itself is cool. I honestly wanted more of the like, oh, different fighting styles because we got a lot of cap, a lot of throwing the shield. Yeah. We got, a, we got a cool T'Challa moment where she pulled out the claws. Yeah. But otherwise, I was like, I wanted to see some... just a little bit more fun. Oh, yeah, we did see some Hawkeye too. Some bow and arrow action. But I just wish I got a little bit more cool, like unique fighting like that because this is a character where you can do so many cool things with. Mm-hmm. But I feel like the actual novelty of the Taskmaster wasn't seen to its full potential. 
honestly, like I realized, I think like probably like halfway through the film, I'm like, if it was a really well-known celebrity, like they would have totally used it as a selling point. So they would have told us if it was like some major celeb, like Mm -hmm. who I was predicting, like it might be. And then at some point during the film, like they were doing so much action and like combat stuff. I leaned over to John. I was like, there's no way this is Elizabeth Moss. Just yeah. Because like so, she's just yeah, this Kelsey's tiny... guesses. Kelsey guessed Uma Thurman, Elizabeth Moss, Millie Bobby Brown, Olivia Coleman, and Emily Blunt. It was none of those. Okay, um, to be fair, the last three were jokes. Right. I was um, really only like feeling yeah. Uma Thurman and, or and, Emily. Oh, Emily. And I'm looking yeah. up her name now. Olga Kurylenko? Kur- Kurylenko. Kurylenko. Olga Kurylenko. Um, a Ukrainian actress. She she was a Bond girl in Daniel Craig's uh, Bond film, Quantum of Solace. Um, mm-hmm. I, I thought she was good. It's just I, I think it was more of the plot device than her as her own character. Mm-hmm. Because that is the whole point. She's under this like spell or whatever. But I wanted her right. to have just like a moment. And I feel like they just kind of didn't. They were just kind of, it was just kind of like a plot device thrown in there. But I, he, I get it. He even says to her, like, thank you for like giving me my best student. So you think it's like going to be Natasha, like, like some sort clone. of clone yeah. or something. Mm-hmm. But then it turns out to be his daughter and he, she was, he was thanking her because he was like, if you hadn't blown up that building and ruined her face and her brain, I wouldn't have been able to program it right. and make her a weapon. Mm-hmm. So thank you. Yeah. So overall, I'm a little underwhelmed by the task. A myself. little because, underwhelmed by that because reveal. I hyped it up so much and for it yeah. to be the, the villain's daughter, it's like, oh, okay. Like, <laughs> like, oh. If you had told me that going in, I'd be like, okay. Because <laughs> then at first I was like, okay, so then maybe like the, the guy, the father is dead and then the girl like took up the mantle of like running the red room. Mm. and continuing on the legacy so yeah. i'm like oh so they're just going to be going after a girl the whole time and then i didn't even like put it together yeah. yeah um okay so now we'll talk about the post credit scene uh as we see if you did not stay around for the credits are you a marvel fan um we actually had our popcorn guy ask us he, he, well, he told us he's like just so you know there's a post credit scene make sure to stick around i'm like and i was like we're here on opening night of black widow there were only two people there were two people did walk out yeah yeah i saw crazy. them because um, I judge them. But yeah, we see Valentina, played by Julia Louis-Dreyfus, approach Florence Pugh's character uh, at the grave of Natasha, which does cement, like you were saying, that Natasha is dead. There's got to be no reversal of Endgame unless Loki does some weird shit in episode six. But um, I think that's good. I think it's kind of like confirming, like, yes, this was a great way to see her again, but like it's still done. Now this is Yelena's story going forward. I, I get it. It's upsetting because it's just we like the character so much. Yeah. Um, but, you know... I think that's the problem with the MCU is sometimes you're like, oh, they're not dead forever. But like sometimes they are and it's sad. Well, but she approaches her and basically says, hey, this is the guy who was responsible for Natasha's death and it's Clint. And that's mm-hmm. your cameo. I thought it was going to be maybe an RDJ cameo only because that was kind of teased by some people. I guess it's false or maybe he's showing up somewhere else. Um, and then there was also, you know, Julia Lily Drivers was a cameo, but the big cameo was the picture of Clint and basically setting up that uh, she might be, Yelena might be the villain of Hawkeye, or at least someone going after Hawkeye in Hawkeye. How do you feel about that? She's like the anti Sam Jackson. She's yes. going over Sam Jackson. Oh my Samuel god! Like Jackson. I know him. I'm yeah. per- like Sam. I just call him Sam. Sam, Sam Jackson. You know, we hang out <laughs> yeah. sometimes. She's she's the anti Nick Fury in the yeah. sense where she's just going around collecting all of these people that That's have been point. wronged by the Avengers and being like, hey want to join my team and take him down. And that's honestly what the first phase was. Every mm-hmm. movie ended with Samuel L. Jackson approaching that person, whether mm-hmm. it be Tony or Bruce Banner, like like telling them, I want you to join the Avengers initiative. And that might be what we get with phase four is her getting John, because now she's got John Walker and now she's got Yelena. Uh-huh. And I think that'll be an interesting, you know, setup. Maybe she'll get Ravona from Loki. Who knows? Um, but just, or Miss Minutes herself. Ooh, we brought her in the podcast. I made her. The, I her in. Um, the only thing that made me extra sad about the post credit scene is that they had this, you know, calm response thing the whole film where they would whistle back and forth to each other, Natasha and Yelena. And when Yelena's at her grave, she does the whistle. So naturally, I'm sure we thought. were all thinking it that there was going to be, I don't know if they, like, this is what I, how I thought it was going to go. She did the whistle. We waited a few beats. The music that was playing in the background stopped. And then I was totally expecting for the response to come. And then it just like, she turns around, boom, cut. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, but is she alive? We mm. don't know. Yeah. But then it was totally just boom, nose blow. It's Julia Louis-Dreyfus. Mm. Oh, by the way. Yeah, it was, a, it was an interesting subversion. I think it would have been a sweeter moment. But but again, like they don't want to reopen that door. And I get it. But then um, don't have her do the whistle because you've got my hopes up, Marvel. Um, oh. Well, and that's one thing, too, that I almost appreciated about the ending is that it wasn't trying to, like, continue Black Widow's story, and it was setting up now Yelena's story. But 
at the same time, the scene you get right before the credits is the scene where she gets this big ship. And it, and that's what I was talking about in the non-spoiler part of the review was just like, they made this huge deal to show this big reveal of a ship. And I said, it's not like a Millennium Falcon where anyone's just going to get out of their seat. Like, it's the ship that mm. Natasha and Steve were on. It's, it's just no one's going to get that excited. And people might be like, oh, cool. But it's never going to be this yeah. huge fan reaction where to end the movie on that. I would have loved it for the movie to just end with that shot of her looking away as her family flew off. Yeah, I think that's where you end the movie, and then you can make the post credits. I don't think like, you needed that scene with the ship because we don't need to see her with the new hair. We know where she ends up next. We see yeah. her in Infinity War. We don't need that setup for a movie that happened in 2018, even longer ago, three years ago. Well, I don't, I don't know if it. you caught on to this deal, but they did tease the new hair. She had a box of hair dye in that RV she was kind of living in with the so generator. Even then, you don't even. So then you don't even need to. So tease I the was hair half either. expecting her to just end up like kind of back at that RV and just like picking up the blonde hair dye because then we go, oh, we know yeah. what's about to happen. It next, almost felt know? like putting that ship there was just to tell people this is where it is in the timeline rather than making any sort of nostalgic, you know, because it's been three years. It's not like again, Force Awakens when it came out, we had not seen the ship in 30 years and we finally see a ship again that was our part of our childhoods this is not the same thing mm -hmm. this is not harry potter comes back 20 years from now and we see the golden snitch again it's not that it's a ship that we saw three years ago and to me it was just like great you're setting up a movie that already happened it's it's i think it was strictly there to say when you watch it as a marathon and you put this after civil war that's to tell you oh yeah that's where natasha ends up next mm -hmm. i didn't think you needed that i think that end shot of her just looking away smiling as her family left because that's the whole thing is she's fulfilled she has a family now she has two families i think you could have edited there especially since that throwaway character wasn't really a character worth exploring anyway yeah for sure and i don't story. know if you knew this going in but like i feel like part of the reveal was the fact that the whole family was fake I thought that they were blood. Oh, relatives. that was a twist you were talking about. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was an expect. I didn't know that. Maybe if I looked further into like uh, Natasha's backstory, like in the comic. I'm not books, sure if like... it was in a trailer that she mentioned, like "You're my sister, not really" type thing. Like, mm. and I just kind of got that vibe just from. Well, I thought trailers. they were just saying that because it's like, well, you went off to be an Avenger, and like you left me here in Russia, oh, so I don't now know. you're barely my. For sister. some reason, going in, I knew that it was just a father and mother figure. Like that, that's who they call the father and mother. Mm. Uh, but I thought it was going to be like they were the father and mother to like all the girls. Like they were almost like running like almost a foster orphanage type oh, thing. Okay. But no, it was like an actual no, meant to be like an actual a, family. It was a setup. Um, it was like a whole covert operation. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, no, and that could be an interesting twist too. If you because they that. started talk, they were like Alexi, and they were like, and then they were like talking about like, so have you ever come come in contact with your real dad? And they mm. and I was like, wait, your real dad? Okay, so wait, they're not your parents? Mm -hmm. Who are those people? Yeah, I feel like for some reason I picked that up either in the promotions for it or, or maybe just the, the commercials. Or maybe maybe it's just from other reviews I, I picked up. I don't really know. You're just know. more intellectual. No, me, I'm I not. I, I honestly wouldn't have guessed it if I hadn't known, though. So like, it, it was a cool reveal, uh, if you don't know. Um, I'm glad I didn't say anything in the spoiler part, uh, the non-spoiler part. And the last thing, that, that reminded me, Alexi, the pig. Oh, okay. So you were talking about the CGI of the pig on the walk up. Like I, I thought the CGI was fine. It was the actual just like watching a pig run out of breath for me just made me very sad. Oh you know, yeah. I mean the like I think the that was the point, point but then they like, kind of made a joke out of it. And like I, I'm not like a huge like oh how dare they joke about this like animal rights type. I love it. I'm an animal rights all the way, but like it's not like that where I'm getting up in arms about them. Yeah, like, calm. Like I'm not saying like animal torture, but it's also like. They lingered on it a little too long. <laughs> I think it's because they want, I think it was a red herring. Honestly, to make you think she was evil. I think, yeah, they wanted yeah. you to think that, you know, she was a good point. She was a bad guy by, yeah. you know, oh, I'm just going to let this pig suffocate for a little bit longer. Yeah, I mean, it just sucks. An animal I just didn't I think, wish she was, she would just, yeah. I, don't know. I mean, I guess I understand the point of the purpose of the pigs now because she was yeah. explaining how, like, the, how they can, you how know, they can control do the, else, do the yeah. mind control yeah. devices Overall, and all yeah, that. Yeah, I, I think I will enjoy this more rewatching things and seeing putting some things together, definitely. I, I did enjoy it a lot. I thought it was good entertainment. It was the right amount of exposition without treating the audience like we were dumb. Yeah, it wasn't you know? like an origin story full on. Like, even Black Panther, I love it, but some of it feels very origin story -y, even though we had already met the character. This one, it's like, we don't really need to know really ton of who Natasha... Well, I guess we did learn a lot about who Natasha was and where she came from, but, uh, you know... It didn't explore it a lot when she was an adult. When we saw her as an adult, yes. it was like, we're throwing her right back into the action. You know, yeah. we didn't see her. If they had done some of the stuff, like, right before leading up to Iron Man 2, I feel like that would have just been a waste of time. So I'm glad they didn't go through all that stuff, like her getting that job and infiltrating her way in there. Um, so do we think we'll see Black Widow again in the MCU? I'm sorry to report, Jill, that, like, I, I think that's it. I think that might be it. So I will say, Scarlett Johansson, you did a great job. 
Uh, thank you for gracing us with your talents. Yeah, I mean, like, it was a good send off. If you. Yelena like gets her own movie of some sort, I could yeah. see her. I could see ScarJo making mm -hmm. a cameo just for like yeah. the heartfelt aspect mm -hmm. of it all. But yeah, I think I, I, think I don't point, think we're getting another Black Widow movie. I think at this point, if Steve Rogers wasn't going to show up in Falcon Winter Soldier, Iron Man didn't show up here, even though some people said he might. I think those three are gone. I think they're done. I think I, I know it's tough. I know there might be rumors out there, but I'm going to say now. So that way I'll be surprised later if they are back, you know. But yeah. Anyways, any last thoughts on Black Widow? Spoiler wise, while we're still have the spoiler ban on. Um, spoiler wise. Um, no, I think we. Yeah, I think we, we covered, covered everything all. major. And the music's good. I mean, the music's, the music's always good. good. Yeah, uh, good, some not, needle, needle drop moment. I was going to say not too many, though. It was nice. It was yeah. American Pie, you get a nice moment. And then they, they cycle back to it. Again, that beautiful heart to heart. Yeah. I love yeah. those character moments, just them relating to each other, just talking. I love that. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Smells Like Teen Spirit. The intro was a little weird. It, it did feel, uh, like I said, it montaged through, too quickly through the cool stuff that I wanted to see more of. But it was it was an interesting choice of song and just the style of it. It almost felt like a TV show intro, just a little longer. Um, with like all the names flashing and then some cool like effects, like we're cool and retro, but I don't know. I just really like how this movie was, you know, was a movie with a woman at the helm. Yeah. And they didn't like they didn't make Natasha like try to be like they weren't pretty with anything. Right. You it know, was like not she glamorous. smashes her face into the desk at the end. Yeah, she, and then when her nose is broken, she puts it back in a place. Right. She does you that know? all like, like yeah, no, no it, there's it's no restrictions. Graphic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's important too. It's not like you know every superhero. I mean, that was some of the reviews on Joss Whedon's Justice League is that it was all just like making ass, uh, like getting nice angles of Gal Gadot's ass. And mm. it's like people don't want to see that anymore. Yeah. Like, if they want to see that, they'll look at some weird like online stuff of people cosplaying at like that. You know, like if sure. you want to see sexy superheroes, I think that that phase is kind of gone. And I think they can still be attractive and sexy even when they're being just people and just like you know not afraid to like. There were moments where I was like, oh, yeah, that's that's hot. But it's not because they're trying to make – it's not like they're zooming in on her butt or, like, doing any glamorous yeah. thing. It's just because they're badass you, and they're being really cool badass yeah. superheroes. And I just enjoy that. You can tell, like, what movies are made with, like, the male gaze in mind. Mm -hmm. Even in the MCU, you know, I'm not saying that they're – that the MCU has been anywhere near perfect when it comes to women representation. Right. But you can tell that this movie was, like – a woman at the as the main yeah. actor and then a woman at the helm. Kate Shortland, though that's the director. We haven't mentioned her name, but Kate Shortland, I think. Shout out to you, Kate. It's good that they got a female to, to run this. And I, I I think also that's one of the strengths of Captain Marvel. I think some of the weak parts of Captain Marvel are the things that the studio not overrode, but like it was all the, the typical Marvel studio stuff that I didn't love. But the actual great parts of it are those talks about like those discussions about feminism and, and being a woman in a male led mm -hmm. franchise like mm -hmm. those moments where you know you share you share a whole video on it go watch it but those are the moments that are the strongest because anna Bowden and ryan fleck ryan fleck is a guy but he's partnered with anna Bowden, who has a really good eye just for female stories and just empathy in general mm -hmm. her movies are great too we might do a marvel like movie book club type thing later on on our show where we look at other uh actors works from the mcu that are outside the mcu and maybe we do that with directors too because i think there's a lot of great directors especially female directors in the mcu now with loki with this with captain marvel that i think their other work is worth exploring as well yeah cool sure. so let me get rid of the spoiler band because we're done with that now everyone let us know what you thought of black widow if you've seen it let me know in the comments below like subscribe share this video uh it's a nice open discussion on black widow with less than an hour so you know put us at double speed get us done in 25 minutes half hour to listen to us in the car if you're listening on podcast if you're watching us here on the dill pickle movie network thank you kelsey where can they find you you can find me on instagram at kelsey a kilpatrick you can find me on tiktok cause 13 or you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, Cause Productions. That's right. And you can find me at Twitter at Dylan Randazzo. D Dylan underscore Randazzo. Sorry about that. You can find me at TikTok at Dylan Randazzo 417. And here, of course, the Dill Pickle Movie Network. If you're watching, if you're listening on podcasts, thank you. We dropped two episodes today. We dropped a Loki one. We dropped our Black Widow review. Next week, we'll be back with the Loki finale. It's going to be insane. This is a, an insane stretch of weeks for Marvel. Like, this is a lot. And then we get a nice break, and we'll decide what we're doing with that. We have some discussions of cool stuff planned. As I said, maybe something to do with ranking the movies or maybe awarding the movies some special prizes. Who knows? Maybe uh, we got some interesting stuff up our sleep. So stay tuned here on Marvelous Movie Mondays, and thank you so much for watching.